Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to study and introduce another ADS-1256 board. And I think this is my most favorite board among those boards which I own. I have like five different uh, ADS-1256 uh, uh, boards. But I think this will be the best. And I will buy a few and use them for different projects because this is like really amazing. So. First of all, what is this ADS-1256? Uh, it's inside this board here. It's an 8-channel 24-bit uh, uh, AD converter. So either you can have 8 uh, single-ended uh, channels. So you use the 8 uh, input pins, plus uh, each of them has its own ground pin. Or you can use this uh, kind of uh, converter uh, in differential mode, which means that you use uh, the first and the second pin as an input, for example, and with this you can have a better uh, signal on your uh, in your readings. And how you use this ADS-1256 is usually uh, via SPI connection, so you cannot really use this AD converter in itself, but it needs a microcontroller, which can be usually an Arduino, or it can be an STM32 microcontroller, or any of your favorite one, which can deal with the SPI uh, standard. But this board is very special, because so far I've been uh, showing uh, standalone uh, boards. So that means that uh, when I showed you the board, it only had the ADS-1256 chip on it and nothing else. So I had to have another board with a microcontroller, which was either an Arduino or STM32. I like those boards really much, so I usually use them. But uh, in this case, as you can see, this is the ADS-1256 chip. It has its own oscillator here. Uh, 7.68 megahertz and then here is another chip which is this STM32F103C6 or C8 uh, which is also called sometimes blue pill and then it has its own oscillator 8 megahertz so this is very cool so what we can see on this board is, is very nice because uh, this is like you can see it's the same circuit. So first of all, the connections between the two controllers or two chips is very well established because all the wires are running uh, within this PCB, which means that uh, there is less chance for picking up uh, electronic noise, electronic noise. So when I use these kind of wires, they are like tangled up and uh, they can act as an antenna and that's not good. So what we can see here is pretty cool because we have this STM32 microcontroller and we know that that's a very powerful microcontroller and uh, we can use it for basically anything. And what this board uh, gives us, this is a power supply here. This is another serial uh, port here. So you can see the TX, RX and the ground connection. Of course, we have the jumpers for the STM32. This is uh, when you want to use the different boot modes. And these, uh, I soldered uh, these things myself, these jumper connections here. But you can see that uh, we have 12 and 10 uh, connections plus ground and uh, 5 volt uh, connection uh, here. So. It's not only uh, for the ADS-1256, this STM32, but you can also use it as uh, the microcontroller so you can have the pins. And I will show you that I will actually use it. So you have the digital uh, pins for that and uh, PWM, I2C, another SPI and so on. You can use them. And here you have the JTAG uh, pins. And that's also very smart. So that helps us uh, to program the STM32. And then of course we have the circuits uh, for the ADS-1256. Uh, so basically what we have is if I cover this part, this is everything uh, related to the STM32 microcontroller. And if I cover 
roughly this part, then everything which is here is the ADS-1256. So this is why I like this board, because it's very compact, it's very small, and it has all the fancy connections that we need. And it's really easy to operate uh, with my software that I wrote. So I did not have to make too much modifications, but there are some tricks. So uh, let's see how we can start this board because it's not that obvious. So what we want to do is we would like to be able to put software, software on the STM32, which can communicate with the ADS and then send us the data. And for that, I will use the ST link. So this is the ST link. And uh, what we will use here is the five volt connection, which will go up to here and the ground, of course. And then the JTAG has two pins, which can be connected to this uh, ST link. That is the SWCLK. So that's basically the clock and SWDIO, that's the uh, data pin. And what you have to observe here, uh, that if you start to count the pins on the bottom row from the left, you have to go four pins. So the fourth pin in the bottom from left to the right, uh, this guy uh, here, that will be the SWDIO pin. And Next to it, so the fifth pin from left to right will be the CLK uh, pin. So you just uh, simply connect uh, this guy there and you don't have to change the boot pin. So that's why I'm using the JTAG here and the ST link because then I don't have to worry about the boot pins. Like uh, if you are using the serial, you have to make it into boot mode and so on. And then you have to put it back before removing the power and so on and so on. That's complicated and yeah, it just messes up the things. So you use the ST-Link. I have a video and uh, I'm using the ST-Link to program or put bootloader on this uh, STM32. So that's what I will uh, use here or I used here. So the software is already on this. So the JTAG is very easy and simple. And that's all. And another way of communication, because now you are able to put the software on this thing by using the ST-Link, uh, but you have to be able to communicate with this chip. And uh, if you observe, there are no USB connections, but here we have this TXRX, which is the serial. So you need another circuit, which is this FTDI uh, converter or adapter. Uh, what this does is that one side has a USB connection that goes toward, to the computer. And then another has this uh, ground CTS five volt DX RX DTR uh, pins. So from this, I will, or I was using three connections. So that is basically the ground TX and RX. And another note is that uh, this has a switch here. Some circuits ha have jumpers. So you can switch between 3.3 and 5 volts, uh, which is the signal level of the TX and RX. And it's particularly important for STM32 because some of their pins are not 5 volt tolerant. tolerant. Luckily, the TX and RX pins are 5 volt tolerant, but this is a 3.3 volt system. So uh, either way, I would rather uh, recommend you to use it in 3.3 volt mode. So what you have to do is you have to provide some power. Either, either you give 5 volt on this pin or you give uh, 6 to 9 volt on this uh, terminal here because we have the voltage regulators. So it doesn't really matter if you use this or that. Don't use them at the same time. Uh, that's the most important thing. So you connect the 5 volt ground and then uh, you connect TX, RX and ground here and you are good to go. You can communicate with this thing. Uh, I will not show that part because it's very complicated to show everything, but uh, I will show you that this works. So another important note, 
So the first uh, connection notice was the JTAG, and that was very straightforward because you connect uh, each pin to its corresponding, let's say, counterpart on the on the board. So the SWCRK goes to the SWCRK, and the SWDIO goes to the SWDIO. But it's different here. So if you take, uh, let's say, you start from this board, you take the TX connection that goes to the RX on this board and the RX on this board goes to the TX on this board. This is very important because otherwise you will not get uh, data. So uh, you have to like twist the wires and connect it uh, to, to here. So once again, TX, RX, RX, TX. This, this is very, very important and you are good to go. So this is all that you need to do. Everything else is basically the same whenever you are using the STM32 uh, and you can put a, a bootloader or just uh, straight away uh, put the software on it. What I did, I put the software straight on this uh, stuff and then I'm communicating via the serial using this board. Another notice. So now we know that we use the ST-Link and the JTAG. We can program this thing. Of course, if you want, you can use the serial port. You just have to change your settings in the Arduino IDE. But we use this for programming because it's very quick. You don't have to change the jumpers. That's all. And we use this for communication. But now the question. STM32 is a very complex microcontroller in terms of uh, number of pins. So we have to do a little bit of a reverse engineering, which means that uh, we have to trace back uh, these connections because what we have, we have the ADS uh, 1256 and that communicates with the microcontroller through the SPI uh, connections, but we don't know which SPI uh, is being used by the ADS because the STM32 has several uh, pins for SPI. So there is not only one uh, SPI connection. So therefore, uh, we have to find those pins which are connected because otherwise we don't know which uh, program we should use. So that's one thing. And also we have a so-called uh, sync pin and we also have a reset pin which uh, need to be found because they are also used and we have to be able to soft, uh, we have to be able to program it. So what I would do, you pick a multimeter, you put it in continuity mode. So when you touch the terminals, there is a beep. So I will put some drawings here uh, before jumping into this just to see how the pins are named for the ADS-1256 and how the pins are named for the STM32. But you can find them on the internet, so uh, maybe it's more easy to uh, open them in their corresponding data sheet than just uh, looking at this video. But I know that here is the circle, so there is a circle on the ADS chip and of course on this one as well. So that helps us to see how it is aligned. And uh, this pin, I just show you one example or two examples and uh, then you can follow the uh, practice. So how you find uh, the connections. So I know that uh, this pin, so the on the corner, that is the sync uh, pin and that should be uh, connected to for example high if it's used in a certain mode so let's uh, find where it is so i just uh, connect this to uh, vdd and then what you do is you take your other probe and you gently like go through all the pins here and you heard the beep so you know that uh, your uh, pin will be in this row that you have to find. But uh, what you should do is you go across and you heard another beep. So it means that uh, it's connected to something which is common. 
Again, you heard the beep. And again, heard the beep. So let's say uh, that, that, you me that means that on each side of this microcontroller, there is something which is common in, in this uh, set of connections. So I just go to the bottom because it's easier to reach. And I heard it. So now I know it's in this line. So I start one by one. And it's on this corner. And what is on this corner is the VDD connection. So that's a sort of a power supply. That means that this uh, sync pin is tied to the high uh, level. And if you check the uh, data sheet of the ADS1256, that's one mode uh, to use this. So this is pretty fine. And we found it. So how you find the other pins is basically you have to look first on the ADS1256 and you have to find that, okay, now I want to look at the data ready pin. So first of all, you have to find the data ready pin on this uh, circuit uh, on the ADS1256. And that pin is on the right side of the chip. And if you count from the bottom, then it's the seventh uh, contact. So I will try to find that. So the probe is connected to the seventh pin from the bottom on the right side of the chip. And then again, I gently pull my other probe on these legs or on these pins. There. So it was only on this side. So it was connected to a specific pin. So I know that now I have to go on the left side of this chip. So I start on the bottom, nothing, second, nothing, third, nothing. Fourth. So that's the number four on this side. So you go to the data sheet of the STM32 and you will find out that that is the PB10 pin. So you have to note this down because you will use this in your code. So you now know that the data ready is in the, is, the data ready is connected to the PB10 pin. So that will be important because you have to make it clear in your software that that is that pin. And one more example, so that's the most important, I think. So I know that one pin about this, so if I start, if I check the ADS1256, I start from the bottom of the right side and I go eight pins up, then that is the D out pin of this chip. So I connected my probe there and now I have to check uh, which is that connection on the STM32. So top row, nothing. Right side, nothing. Bottom, oh, there. So there was something on the bottom. So now uh, it is somewhere in this corner. So what I do, I start in this corner and go one by one. So first nothing, second nothing, third. So it seems like it is the third. Let me double check. Yeah, so it is the third pin on this. And that should be the PB14. And that's very important. That's the D out on the ADS or the MISO, so master in slave out uh, pin on this. And why it is important uh, in terms of the PB pins? because you will discover that this guy has multiple SPI and the PB14 uses the second F SPI channel. That means that when you program your uh, STM circuit, you have to be very careful and you have to initialize the second SPI channel in order to be able to communicate with the ADS1256. Uh, so now we know that uh, we can search for each pins and we also know that uh, the SPI2 is being used. So either you search for the rest of the pins, so now you can search for the D in and the chip select and so on, but uh, if you found one, 
and you know that uh, the SPI2 is used, then you just look up the data sheet of these two things, especially the STM32, and you will see that uh, what is the rest of the pins which are used in the SPI2 uh, channel. So that's fine. And uh, you saw that on my table there was another thing, which is a I squared C based uh, LCD. And that has an SDA and SCL uh, pin. And they are connected to the I squared C on this microcontroller. So what we want to do, or what I want to do is I also want to connect an LCD uh, to this microcontroller so I can see the voltage. So I already put the software on this and I already programmed it uh, to display the data of the first channel uh, converted into voltage. So that should be fine. So what we do here is we are using either these or these pins. So we want to use the I squared C connection. And if you look it up in the data sheet, you will see that the SCL1 is connected to the PB6 and the SDA1 is connected to the PB7. So what I will do now is, since I already have the software on this and everything is set up, I connect the LCD, I connect the uh, power supply, and then by using this, I will make some measurements. So what I did here is there is a voltage divider here, as you can see. So this is the positive side, and then this is where we get the output voltage, and this is tied to the ground. So what I will do, I will measure the voltage on the 5 volt rail because this is connected to the 5 volt and uh, I will check the exact values of these uh, resistors. Then I will calculate the output voltage and then I will measure it with this multimeter and I will measure it with this and compare the results. And then I will also use a 100 kilo ohm potentiometer and connect it to the uh, first differential channel, so A in 0 plus A in 1, and see how it works. And all the data is displayed on this uh, display. So I just have to wire up everything and see how it works. So everything is assembled and we are ready for the measurements. So once again about the connections, so this uh, LCD is using the I squared C, so it is connected to the microcontroller via the SDA and SCL connections or pins. So the SDA goes to the pin number 43 and the SCL goes to the pin number 42. So that's all. And then VCC GND is very obvious. And one part of the testing circuit is a potentiometer, 100 kilo ohms. I will measure the voltage between the ground and the output or viper of this potentiometer and I will use uh, these clips to connect uh, the output to the multimeter and I will use these two wires, uh, the gray and the purple, to connect the output voltage to the ADS1256. The positive uh, is the A in 0 and that's the gray and the A in 1 which is the negative is that's the ground. And the left side here is a voltage divider and I will tell more details when I start to test this. So here we have our USB based uh, power supply. So I will use this USB cable and this will provide roughly 5 volts uh, to the system. And we measure the output voltages here. Uh, it doesn't matter what is the exact input voltage here because we just measure the same output voltages. We just want to see if the ADS measures the same as my multimeter. But here uh, I will provide uh, voltage to this voltage divider through my power supply. So we will be sure that the same voltage is uh, being measured by the two things. So power it up here first and here. So you see the blocks, hopefully, and you see the message and you see the readings. So 
Now the voltage is set to a very low value. Uh, I think you can see it. If not, hopefully this will help. So 481 millivolts, 0 0.481. Also the fourth digit is nailed. So that's like almost the same all the time. So let's change it to some higher values. 1.044, 1.044. Let's go up. 1.333, 1.333. So we are very precise uh, in the milliwatt range. And of course we can go down more, but you can see that those numbers fluctuate too much. So maybe we could measure the fourth digit. So we could measure something in hundreds of microvolts uh, range, but let's not go there now. So 1.429, 1.429. So what I wanted to show you that it works nicely and it shows the same numbers. So what I do now is I will go to this wattage divider. So what we want to do is we want to have a very precise uh, voltage source. So I will use an external power supply instead of using this. So I just uh, remove this and this connection. So we measured the ground here. And first I just want to measure the input voltage of this thing. So it's not a good practice to mix these wires. but. So what we know about this is that this resistor up here has a value of 1961 ohms and then this has 999 ohms. So we have to know what is our power supply. So I will give it uh, 4 volts just to be on the safe side. So 4.0 23 is the input voltage and uh, that suggests that if I measure the output so here uh, the output voltage should be 1.358 so let's change this to this so now everything is connected here uh, regarding the AD converter and I connected the ground of the power supply to the ground of the power supply of this. So they are at the same potential. And if you see that uh, now they measure the same uh, voltages. So you have to be very careful about the ground uh, connections to have everything at the same if you are measuring like uh, precise voltages. But you can see that uh, both of these 1.37, 1.37. That's pretty nicely same. So you can see that this works uh, as well. So I hope that this uh, was helpful or it was somewhat entertaining or instructive. I just wanted to show you that this board uh, can be a very, very good choice if you are looking for something very complex, but still very simple in that sense that this is like a very, very small board and it contains all the things that we need. So we have the eight channel AD converter, we have a bunch of digital pins, so you can have PWM, SPI, uh, another I squared C, you can have a set of uh, displays and, and whatever. And you can have the serial connection to your computer and you can uh, measure everything and log everything. If I use the other SPI or I squared C, uh, I can have an SD card reader. I can put the data straight uh, on an SD card without uh, involving a computer and so on and so on. So we could see that uh, this is a very powerful board. Unfortunately, it is a bit pricey. So when I bought this, it was $35. It's not that pricey because if you buy a standalone board or individual uh, ADS uh, 1256 board, that is roughly $20, at least today. And the STM32 board is, let's say, ranging between three to five dollars but then you have to use a lot of wires and uh, it's just more confusing but you don't have to use the ftdi connection there so the ftdi uh, connector or the ftdi board is another let's say two dollars of uh, spending 
So at the end, there will be like eight to ten dollars difference between these two boards, but maybe this is a more safer option to use. So yeah, uh, once again, uh, please subscribe if you haven't done it yet and uh, share your comments and thoughts uh, in the comment section. So I'm really happy to help you or discuss uh, some other things regarding this board. And uh, I hope that you learned something and see you in the next video.